Wow. These pictures, man. I love this camera. Yo, yo, guess what I just got done? Did you clean your car? Nope. I just got 28 emails done on this Blackberry. Really? I mean, don't you need to work on a computer for that kind of stuff? Nah, I'm telling you, man, the physical keyboard on this Blackberry is definitely something worth checking out. Here, wanted to give it a shot. Oh, cool, man. Thanks. So this is the BlackBerry Key 2, the successor to the BlackBerry Key 1 that I was very fortunate to test out last year. I did get some hands-on time with this device uh, during launch, uh, and um, quite frankly, I had mixed feelings about this particular smartphone and how well would it compete with the rest of the Android flagship smartphones in 2018, especially considering its $650 price tag. That is an expensive, you know, it's a premium price to pay for a smartphone of this caliber. Um, but either way, I've been using the Key 2 for about a month and it has been an interesting experience, quite frankly, similar to the Key 1. So I'll be spending the majority of this video talking about uh, using the physical keyboard on an Android smartphone in 2018. What's it like adapting a lifestyle that's completely different from a typical average uh, Android smartphone? So let's discuss. All right, so let's talk about some of the improvements that BlackBerry has done uh, to the Key 2 when compared to the Key 1 uh, in terms of the physical keyboard. So from a material finish, it's now matte black versus a glossy plastic finish from the Key 1. So this does a few things. One, uh, it helps a little bit with the grip. So if you're typing on the smartphone, uh, you would notice that you'd actually be able to hit all those buttons easily because there's that extra texture that adds and it really complements the typing experience and obviously it doesn't get greasy as fast or as plastic so uh, i really like the matte finish plus again it aesthetically looks really nice with the device blends in really well with the aluminum unibody frame so from a design standpoint i love what blackberry has done in terms of the material choice uh, for the physical keys the buttons are a little bit bigger than last year's model so they do complement the typing experience the tactile feedback is excellent. Again, it is an awesome experience when you're composing emails uh, once you're used to it. There's less room for typos because it is a physical keyboard uh, with individual buttons so you can feel them as you're typing them uh, over something like a virtual keyboard where you're just sort of tapping on the glass. Do note that the phone doesn't vibrate when you're typing on the physical keyboard, but rather you get this tactile sort of experience. The actuations are pretty short, yet they're defined. The spacebar key still acts as a fingerprint reader, which is a great implementation in the first place. Great job, BlackBerry, for still keeping that. The speed key is a new feature that has been added to the key too. So this essentially allows the user to quickly switch between apps without having to go through the home screen and it is programmable. So for instance, I can assign I for Instagram, F for Facebook, C for Chrome or G for Gmail, and I can access those apps by holding down the speed key and pressing those respective buttons. It's a cool feature. Uh, customizability is just endless with all these 52 buttons. You can assign them with, to a certain app. But personally, I haven't really taken advantage of this feature because I'm so used to exiting out of the app and looking for other apps and accessing them. Uh, but I wanna hear your thoughts on speed key. What do you guys think about it? Is it a cool, uh, faster way to access apps, switch apps in particular? Flick typing is still present. Consider it as an auto-correct functionality with a Gboard or I guess a BlackBerry version of that. So you can flip up to register your desired word or flip back to erase it. It's quick and fast. It works really well. Surprisingly better than Gboard, if I'm being very honest. Now the presence of this physical keyboard is a godsend when it comes to multitasking. You can have a YouTube video playing at the top and have your mail app below, and you can start composing your email without any unnecessary interruptions. So for instance, on my Pixel 2, I tried opening up a YouTube video on the top, and of course I tried composing an email, but right now when you look at it, I have the virtual keyboard sort of taking half the screen, and then and I have my email, but then the video is completely cut off. So, you know, from a realistic screen to body ratio, it uh, just doesn't make any sense when it comes to multitasking, especially for this particular feature. But for the Key 2, it works really well because the screen size is just perfect for that split view. So, yeah, I think overall the execution when it comes to multitasking is just a lot better on the Key 2. It makes a lot more sense on the Key 2 when compared to something like uh, an Android smartphone or for instance, a Pixel 2 in, in this case. The scroll feature is still present, but it's not that big of an improvement compared to the Key 1. 
it works pretty well with some apps and not so much with others. For example, with Google Docs, it skips like 50 lines with just a gentle swipe. Now, I thought that the center area of this keyboard was scroll sensitive, but having used a smartphone in one hand, I've realized that the whole keyboard is sensitive and it doesn't have any palm rejection. So if I hold this keyboard pretty stiffly like that, um, I've noticed times where the screen would just keep scrolling up and down in a faster manner and it just takes away that whole experience when you're viewing content or uh, if you're just reading up something online. So yeah, that's just something that I wanna mention. Speaking of one hand operation, that was quite the challenge with the key too. In fact, the key one as well. Uh, typing, again, it gets significantly slower, especially when you're trying to reach the secondary number keys. It is again, very highly inefficient. I think the physical keyboard is really geared towards two hand operation. You really need to use both of your thumbs for the fastest experience. Now, considering that this is a physical keyboard, glide typing is totally out of question when you compare it to uh, other Android smartphones with a virtual keyboard uh, featuring that. So if you're looking for something with one hand operation or something that you can quickly compose text with, Key2 is definitely not for you because I can quickly compose texts and emails with that feature. I should also mention that I've run into times where I would accidentally uh, hit the home screen or the home button when I'm trying to reach for the T or the Y, one of the keys of the top row. So that gets a little bit annoying, especially when you're trying to type up something. Uh, and I think part of this has to do with how sensitive the uh, capacitor or the navigating buttons are, which are capacitor by the way, so that I did find a little bit annoying, so do keep that in mind. If you're an emoji lover, then the BlackBerry Key 2 is certainly not for you uh, because by default, the device uses the BlackBerry keyboard, so the emoji collection is fairly limited, plus it opens up uh, half of the screen real estate if you're looking for a certain emoji. So again, it really takes away from that experience, plus you don't have the option to search for a particular emoji uh, or even a GIF. Now, if you were to compare this to something like Gboard, uh, it would be of a larger collection because it gets constantly updated, and I would much rather prefer Gboard over uh, the BlackBerry keyboard just because the collection is there. Now you could technically use Gboard on the key too. It's just a matter of switching back and forth between the BlackBerry keyboard and Gboard. Uh, and that can be done automatically within the notifications tab where when you're trying to compose a text or an email, it'll automatically pop up. It's just a matter of your user preference. The only issue is that uh, when you're trying to use the secondary functions, you'll have to hold the shift key uh, and you know compose or uh, hit that secondary function button, whether that's a number or if you're trying to capitalize a certain letter. But when you're using the BlackBerry keyboard, uh, accessing the secondary functions is just a matter of simply hitting the Alt or the Shift just once and you'll be uh, able to use those secondary keys. So that's something to keep in mind. Again, it's possible, but personally, I just don't think it's a feasible uh, option. So having discussed my experience using the physical keyboard on the Key 2, what are some of the workarounds when it comes to using the device in general, when it comes to other tasks? Well, let's start with the display. Uh, it is a significant compromise for someone who heavily invests their time on phones consuming content. The lack of front-facing speakers. I mean, I really wish if the earpiece acted as a left channel just to add that extra kick when it comes to watching a video or something, uh, as the bottom-facing one can be easily muted. And of course, there's a lack of water resistance. Remember, if water gets into this device through the tiny gaps, the phone's functionality is pretty much compromised. Last but not least, there's a lack of wireless charging. So there are a lot of compromises uh, and I'd say drawbacks uh, with the key too. And I think someone who's willing to invest $650 on something like the key too should really, you know, look at their existing lifestyle and see themselves sort of start analyzing, probably put together a pros and cons list and see, hey, what are some of the features that I uh, see myself using with the key tool? And what are some of the features I don't really care, what I don't really use? So yeah, that's, uh, that's that. The display is pretty much the same size as the Key 1. You get the same 4.5 inch 1620 by 1080 IPS display. Color reproduction is just as expected. There are good viewing angles and a balanced contrast ratio. It's again, nowhere closer to the saturation levels found on Samsung flagships. It's not a super bright panel, I'll be honest. So viewing outdoors might be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, battery life, in one word, is exceptional. It features a 3500 milliamp hour battery, the exact same capacity as, as its predecessor. Uh, I was easily able to get through a couple of days with a single charge under casual use, and this involves checking my email, browsing the web, checking up on social media like Twitter and Instagram, and messaging as well. Now, if you're a heavy user, say for example, you consume a lot of media content, uh, then you can certainly get through a day and a half worth of use on the Key 2. I don't think you'll be able to kill the battery in a single day just because uh, the way how they've built this device in terms of the specs and how efficient it is, is pretty interesting because you've got a smaller display, a pretty efficient processor, uh, 
uh, and so all of these things sort of work hand in hand to give you that really good battery life. Now I just want to quickly go over the software experience on the BlackBerry K2. So out of the box, BlackBerry has loaded it with Android 8.1 uh, Oreo, and it is expected to receive the Android P update later on. Now from an OS perspective, nothing really has changed from the key one. You're getting the exact same sort of bloatware apps like BBM, uh, BlackBerry Hub, and a few other applications that are of course preloaded on the, on the phone, but I really don't see myself taking advantage of them. Then there's the Locker app, which I found to be particularly interesting because it's a pretty important feature and actually one of the key selling features of the key too. Essentially, it's a private hub that lets you add certain apps folders, documents, or even pictures with your fingerprint verification. In my case, I had my banking app set up, so every time I open them, uh, it would have to, or I would have to authenticate the startup with my fingerprint. It's an added layer of security in my opinion, and if you're someone who's working in the corporate world where you're dealing with a lot of confidential files, photos and all the other kind of stuff. Uh, this is something that you could take advantage of where you would obviously need that extra authentication to access those files. Uh, so uh, kudos to BlackBerry for including that. And I really wish if other Android uh, smartphones would be able to directly integrate that. I'm sure third party apps are available, but still it, it would be pretty cool to have that uh, out of the box. And the last thing that I want to discuss here is the camera performance on the Key 2. And this is probably going to be a short segment, but I'll say it right now, it's pretty terrible. Uh, I mean, look, looking at these pictures, it definitely looks like it's coming from a smartphone that's $150 to $200 rather than a $650 smartphone. I mean, these pictures, they don't do any justice. Um, you know, the sensor doesn't do a really good job exposing for the highlights. HDR doesn't really work that well. Um, I mean, I left all these settings in auto mode. I thought HDR would do some justice, but that was not the case. One of the best gaming headsets is now available through MassDrop. The PC37X has fantastic drivers, incredible comfort, and the best microphone in the class. Plus, they look awesome for a gaming headset. Check out the drop link below. So there you have it, my experience using the Key2 for the past few weeks, of course, with this physical keyboard. Uh, now, would I recommend this phone for $650? No, because I really feel like BlackBerry, step, they, they just went a little too further when it comes to pricing. Really wish if this phone, or I would have wished that this phone was priced somewhere between 450 to 550. I think that would have been a pretty cool sweet spot for this particular device because at 650, when you look at the competition, uh, it is just, it's, it doesn't make any sense. You have the OnePlus 6, the, the, um, the Google Pixel 2, uh, and a few other smartphones as well. So the key two doesn't really compete with those regard with those with those flagships but if you take pricing out of the equation then this is a unique device in my opinion first and foremost the physical keyboard uh, it really is an awesome feature or a unique a design implementation when it comes to a productivity. If you want to get work done, if you're someone who's scripting on the go, if you're writing a lot of emails, if you're basically spending the majority of your time outdoors, uh, you know, working and just getting work done, I think the physical keyboard will really come in beneficial. Um, it just makes a lot more sense, especially when it comes to multitasking uh, and, you know, less room for typos compared to Gboard on my Pixel 2, which I'm really uh, frustrated with. So yeah, when it comes to productivity in general, Key 2 is an excellent option. And there are also the security features that are built into the Key 2, which just takes things up a notch, uh, especially with DTEC and the way how it handles and scans all the apps in the background for whether or not if it's accessing your microphone or a camera. Uh, it's just really awesome. And I'm gonna end on this note. No one's gonna buy the Key 2 for the best possible display, you know, the best cameras or uh, the best content consuming experience. That's not what the Key 2 is really geared towards. It really is a work machine. If you want to get work done, this is what you should probably look into, but you could still get them done on your smartphones. It's just that this would help, the physical keyboard would really help elevate that experience. Uh, and of course, you know, considering the drawbacks, um, those are some of the things that you'll have to consider when you're looking into something like the Key2. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this device. What do you guys think about it? Uh, does it have its place or is it worthy enough to compete with the rest of you know the Android smartphones of 2018. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.